Hello viewers and students. Welcome back to iTeaches. Today we will learn mathematical library functions. Now before we proceed, let's learn what is function. Basically function is a block of code that performs some specific task when called. To understand this, just consider you want to perform an addition. So in addition, you need to write a block of code and you save it under a name. Whenever you require that particular code, you simply call that name. And here that name we can consider it as a function, which will perform the action on those uh, code and finally produces a result for you. Now to know more about functions, let's proceed further. It is also known as method in Java. Basically, we are talking about mathematical library functions in Java. So the functions are known as method. Information can be passed to the method through parameters. So the parameters are the values which we will going to pass inside a function. Then the function will perform the action on those values and finally produce a result. There is no limit to the number of parameters. You can pass as much as number of parameters to a function and function will perform the operation on it and produces a final result. All right, now let's proceed. What are the different types of functions on the basis of definition? There are two types. One is user-defined function and another one is built-in function. User-defined functions are those functions which are created or defined by the user like you and me or the programmer. Whereas the built-in functions are those functions which are already available in the Java. So these functions will perform some specific operation. One of the example of built-in function is mathematical library function. Yes, today's topic is mathematical library function and we are going to see this built-in function. So in mathematical library functions, we have two topics. First one is introduction to mathematical function and next one is categories of mathematical function. So let's start with introduction to mathematical function. Now, the introduction is very important part of mathematical function. First, mathematical functions are the part of standard library of math class. That means all these mathematical function is present inside a single class, which is maths. Now, it is also a part of java.lang package. That means if you want to use math class, you need to import java.lang package. So the overall picture is java.lang.math class. This particular class contain all your mathematical operations, such as round of elementary exponential, log, square, cube root, and uh, trigonometric function. So one by one, we will see all these things. Now, before we proceed, let's see what is the syntax of mathematical function. So students and viewers, you should know the syntax, how you are going to write the code for this mathematical function. So basically, the first thing is we need to write down math, which is, which is the class. Then we have to use a period operator, which is dot, and name of the function that you want to use. Now, after this, we have to give the parameter or the argument for the function. Now. An example I have already given. Let's see math and SQRT and well. Now what is math? It's a class. And what is this SQRT? It is the method. Basically this SQRT method means the square root method. We will see this particular method in the coming portion of this video. And the third one is the argument or the parameter. So this is the overall picture of how you have to write a mathematical function code in Java. Now, I have divided uh, this whole mathematical functions into certain categories. There, I have divided it into four categories, namely the minimum maximum function, then cube root, square root, log, power, basis. Another one is uh, rounding absolute values and random. And then finally, we will see the trigonometric function. So let's start with the first function, minimum and maximum function. Now the minimum and maximum functions, these are the two functions we have, min and max. So I have divided 
uh, this particular table into four columns basically the first is the name of the function next we have the syntax then explanation and example now let's start with mean now mean is what this function uh, will do the comparison between the two numbers and returns the smallest number between them from the name only you can understand that this is going to return the minimum value after comparing the two values so here in the example i have taken 20 and 10 and this mean function will return 10 because it is going to take out the minimum value from it and return the value and which is going to store inside the written value uh, variable. Similarly, in the max function also, you will see that a max function and then I have given another same value 20 and 10 out of where the function will return 20 because it is going to extract the maximum value from it. Now, uh, before we proceed further, see the syntax, how it is organized. This is a very important portion because without knowing the exact form of the function, you cannot write down the code. So that's why you always remember these two functions will going to accept two parameters and it was definitely those two parameters should be the number. And this is going to accept these two values and finally, depend upon uh, what kind of function you're going to call mean or max it is producing the minimum value or the maximum value for you now let's proceed the next category is cube square root log and power function now here it is the first function will start with the cube root cbrt basically this is the functions syntax where it accept a double type variable the double type value means the decimal values only with higher precision. Uh, this function will take a double type value and return the cube root of that double type value. Now, as you can see over here, I have taken an example as 27.0. That is 27, the value I have passed. It will find out the cube root of this particular value and return the cube root. And the cube root value will be stored inside this particular variable C root. So finally, we're going to get 3 as an output. We will going to see all this kind of uh, these functions in the coming video. Uh, I will show you practically. So today's lesson will be theory based only. So coming videos, I'm going to give you a practical lesson. That means using the blue Java editor, I will perform all these operations and you can easily see it practically. All right, now let's uh, proceed forward. Next one will be power. This is the uh, power function. Power function means it is going to accept a base and an exponent. Now to understand this base and exponent, if you have learned indices, you can easily understand what is base and exponent. Basically 2 to the power 3 if we put over here. So 2 is the base and 3 will be uh, the exponent. So 2 will be multiplied 3 times. So if you multiply 2 3 times, we are going to get 8. So the same type of operations can be performed in power. So we can see the example also here I have taken. But always, uh, viewers and students always keep in mind that uh, syntax are very important. You have to learn the syntax uh, thoroughly because without knowing the syntax, you cannot write down the code for that particular function. So learn the syntax properly. All right, let's proceed to the next part. Next, we have log. So this function will take a double value uh, and return a natural log of the double value. So you have to put certain values inside it and if you want to see the log of that value the natural log of that value you will get it so if you have learned log in class 9 and 10 you can easily understand this particular function also next function is sqrt we have already discussed about these functions in the previous part of the video uh, where this function will take one number and return square root of that number just like cube root this is a square root suppose i put 16 so the square root of the 16 will be 4. So here is the output of the particular value, whatever we need to put. All right, let's move on to the next portion. The next category is a rounding absolute values and random function. Now, basically, let's start with an absolute value. So what is absolute value function? Absolute value means uh, it is, we are usually put the values like 35, 36, 37, whatever you write. We, we are not putting any sign in front of it. Usually it is plus sign if we write simply 35, 36, 37 like that. But if we explicitly mention 
uh, like minus 35 minus 45 then only can understand the difference between 35 and minus 35 but uh, when we uh, need only the absolute value that is the numeric value only we want uh, that means we want to ignore the sign in that case this abs come into play that means if you write over here that abs minus 35 so you are going to get only 35 irrespective of its sign so this is the use of absolute value that means you are absolutely focused on the value without the sign the next function is the random the random function is a double it does not take any parameter basically whenever we call this random function we are going to get the values between 0 and 1 remember we are going to get double values that means the decimal values so there are infinite numbers of values between 0 and 1 that means there are many decimal values in between 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.00003 like this way there are infinite numbers of values can be possible in between 0 and 1. So this random function basically does not take any parameters and it is going to return the values between 0 and 1. Alright, let's proceed. Uh, next we have the seal. Here seal is this function will take the value of a double type and written the next integer value greater than n. Now here suppose whatever the value I will pass, for example, if I plus 7.6, we know that this 7.6 lie between 7.0 and 8.0, all right, or 7.0 or 7.9. So now if I consider this seal, seal means the upper portion, upper value, upper integer portion or the integral portion, in that case, 7.6 lie between uh, 7.0 and 8.0. What is the upper part? The upper part is 8.0. So as a result, seal will return the upper part. We can simply say it is sealing. Uh, next one is floor. Exactly the opposite of sealing is what do you have floor. So what is floor? The floor is what it is going to give you the lower value. All right, of a particular range. So again, if I take 7.6, so 7.6 is lie between 7.0 and 8.0. So what is the lower value of it? So the lower value is 7.0 on the scale. So that's why this floor is going to give you 7.0. So again, you understand, just you consider your house, you have a ceiling in your house, that is a roof, and you have a floor. The floor is the lower portion, whereas the ceiling is the higher portion. So so if any value which is lying in between uh, upper limit and the lower limit seal will give you the upper limit and floor will be going to give you the lower limit now let's proceed to the next all right let's see what is the next function we have round function here now the round function is doing what this function will take values of double type and return the nearest long integer value now what does this means it means that it is going to take a double value and it is going to return a long so long means uh, integer now uh, let's see what is the working of this particular function how this function work basically it accept a parameter here it is a double parameter and then it adds 0 0.5 to it after adding 0 0.5 whatever the result you are going to get it is going to take the floor value of the result and that will be the final value this function will return now to understand this let's take an example suppose I've taken 123.49 now 123.49 is a parameter and this round function will add 0 0.5 to it as a result the value become 123.99 now this uh, 123.99 is lie between the range 123.0 and 124.0 so definitely this function is going to take the floor value so you have already done floor value in the previous uh, video a uh, previous uh, section of this video so that's why you know, this floor value is ultimately 123 because it is a lower value uh, whereas if I take anything over here as 0. Point, uh, suppose 123.51 and we add 0. 0.5 to it so it will be the resultant will be 124 point something so 124 point something this means it is lie between 124.0 to 125.0 so the lower value that is the floor value will be 124 in that particular case the result will be 124 if we take 123.50 or 123.51 in that case the result may become across 124 but in this case as i have taken less than 0 0.5 so that's why the result is the lower value is considered as 123 itself so i hope uh, the round function working is clear to you uh, 
I probably make a video, a practical video of all these functions. Um, then we'll understand that how this function practically work. All right. So let's see in the coming video if I can make. All right. Let's move on to the last section of our video. This is uh, the trigonometric function. Now we know that there are three functions. We have sine, cos, and ten. All right. Uh, interesting part is usually uh, this particular function, the sine, cos, ten, usually take a degree. All right. So we usually pass a degree over here. So, but in this Java, the sine, cos, ten function is basically except a radian. Means there are two types. One is degree and radian. So here basically it accept radian type. So as a result, if you pass a degree directly, you will get a wrong result here, because it accept only the the radian, the value in radian. So this function accept angle of a radian. Remember, not in degree, it is in radian, and return the sine of angle of radian. All right. So that's why you need to be very careful before we put any value inside it. It is not in degree. It should be in radian. So although there is no worry on it, because uh, suppose we take degree 30, so the degree 30, the equivalent radian will be 0.5 to 3, something like this. All right. So uh, there is a function in math class again that will convert your degree to uh, the radian, which is two radians. And you have to specify two radians, and uh, in the two radians, you have to specify the degree as a parameter. It is automatically going to convert that into a radian equivalent that value you can use it inside these functions in these parameters we can use so two radians always remember we have to use uh, before we uh, we cannot directly put the degrees inside if you have degree you convert the degree into radians and then you put it inside um, this function then only you'll get a correct result so as you can see the 30 the equivalent is 0 0.5 something in red so when we put it in this one we are going to get this value so yes degree 30 is actually half in sine, we are going to get 1 by 2. Sine 30 is 1 by 2. So as a result, it is almost correct only. So like this way, in the other two functions also, then cos, you can get the cosine of angle of a radian again. In 10 also, you are going to get uh, the tangent of the angle of radian. So you know that, uh, that here in the example 30, I have taken because the value of that particular 30 is how, uh, pi by 6 in radian. So because of that only uh, in this particular example I have taken only this much and uh, this picture that I am putting over here you can see it in this picture also the radian and the degree equivalents are given so from this picture also you can understand that uh, what is the radian equivalent of a particular degree all right so these are the four categories we have in the functions the mathematical library function in Java so I hope that this video about uh, these functions is clear to you. So as I say that uh, I will make one video on uh, the practical use that is in Blue Java ID. I'm going to describe all these functions and you can see that uh, how you have to code this function, how you have to use this function and how you're going to get the result. All right. So all right, viewers, that's it in this video. So thanks for watching the I teachers and uh, I hope you like this video and if you like this video then please like share subscribe don't forget to press the bell icon 